Pavit Gaurav Gupta, the Chief Growth Officer for MG. Gaurav, you've got some interesting news to share. You've just announced MG Select. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about this? And first of all, of course, congrats on the launch of the Windsor. No, thank you, Sergius. You know, when we looked at the entire opportunity in India, and we realized that the new India today, the consumers are looking at the need to look at going up in their entire buying cycle across products, be it automotive, be it elsewhere. And, and therefore, when you look at the current penetration of luxury cars in India, just about a percentage compared to the total industry. And looking at the requirement of the new Indian today, the new age luxury customer requirements, we feel that there is an immense opportunity by bringing in MG Select, our new luxury channel in the marketplace. Right. So, so basically, MG Select, from what I understand, Gaurav, is to retail MG cars. So you're not doing a separate brand uh, in terms of a different uh, badge, but it's going to be uh, MG cars, but sold through a separate uh, channel, separate dealerships. <clears throat> so what we will be doing, Sergius, is we are going to be bringing in uh, cars, which are going to, of course, serve the definition of, a, you could say, new accessible luxury, okay. number one. Number two, we will be having an entire package for the consumer in terms of both the product, the curated experience for ownership, and obviously the overall care that we will be looking at building up that we want to bring in as a differentiator for the MG Select. Now the MG Select channel itself will be unique and distinct from the current channel that we have as MG. So that continues as MG mainstream. This will be the luxury entry of MG by bringing in MG Select as a standalone facility, standalone workshops. And here the products that we will bring in, and we'll talk more about that, uh, will actually be able to complement and help this stance build up. Right. So, Gaurav, when can we expect the first uh, select outlet to open? And what's your target for, let's say, the first year of operation? So, we are going on a very, very stretch uh, plan as we speak. We're sitting in September today, mm -hmm. mid-September 2024. Our plan is to actually get going within the calendar year 25 Q1. So, Q1 next year, within about six months from now, we are going to be having our presence in the marketplace with both our product as well as our facilities. Uh, to begin with, uh, while we will be looking at covering the entire country over time, wherever the market opportunity is, but we are going to build up a phase one with 12 experience centers for MG Select. So 12, this would be across, I would assume, obviously the major metros and uh, the major to begin cities with, to begin you are, with. To begin to with, begin. you're absolutely right. Uh, and, but at the same time, we do know that consumers beyond these 12 centers will also be wanting to take a piece of the action of the right. MG offering. So we are working on how we can uh, serve those markets as well and take into account the aspiration of the consumers in those areas. Okay. So on service, since you said it's going to be separate outlets for both sales and service, would the select products be limited to servicing at these outlets only or would they be able to take advantage of your already set up network because you already have a wide network you know See, so as, wide we limited. Said, uh, as we said today in our release uh, you know we have invited potential partners uh, to uh, write to us and express their interest in joining us for the mg select uh, franchise across okay. the country uh, we've got a very overwhelming response already as we speak in just a short time uh, obviously, we will be looking at evaluating various models of how we take this to the front end. Okay, so so things are open there as such. Uh, you've got some time, I would assume, I would not say things out. are open, but I would say we've got various options available okay. to serve to different requirements. Right. And, you know, Garo, I have to, have to ask you here, you know, in terms of the model itself, mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen Maruti do this with, let's say, Nexa, uh, right, where they have the same, you know, Maruti branded cars, but two, <clears throat> two separate retail networks. At Nexa, there isn't a hard line differentiating. You know, there is overlap in terms of pricing. It's not like a price line. What's your thought on how are you going to differentiate your regular mainstream products and select? Is there going to be a price line or... Uh, it's a know? very interesting observation, uh, Sergius. You know, uh, there are various examples available both within the country and within the uh, non-auto category as well to observe and learn from. Uh, the luxury definition, the new accessible luxury definition by itself is not just limited by a price point. Okay. It's about being able to have that entire package of experience of product, price point, and obviously the way we want to curate the overall uh, ownership perspective from the customer. Now, there are various approaches available to us. The very fact that we're calling it MG Select mm -hmm. 
you know, to begin with, we are looking at products which will, of course, help us to put a stick in the ground from a luxury market perspective. Uh, as of now, there are price points in the market for luxury uh, definition in the automotive sector, starting with, you know, entry luxury. But we feel that there is a lot of opportunity available there in bringing something fresh to the consumers. And we'll be having a very good cross play of product, pricing and the entire package. Okay, great. So then, you know, Gaurav, that brings me to another question. Would there be a differentiation between, um, you know, powertrains like Tata are doing, for example, EV only showrooms, you know, uh, is that something you're looking at or again here, would it be uh, a solution? So I would not be able to comment on the, on the other players, but our approach will be very clear that the, 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 the MG Select entire channel will be based on NEVs, new energy okay. vehicles, which will be taking care of hybrids, okay. plug-in hybrids, as well as electric vehicles. Electric. So these three would be the mainstream offerings that we want to start with for MG Select. We were talking shortly that um, we already have shortlisted and our work is in progress to bring in four products in the next two years. Uh, and as the market evolves, we'll have more choices for the customer. Right. So these four products we're talking about in the Select? Yes. Okay. Great. And so they will, there is no cross overlapping right. uh, between the two channels right. as such because these four products are going to be all new. Right. Uh, they will be of different body styles right. uh, because the luxury segment has an entire choice of whether it's a sedan, SUV, right. et cetera, et cetera. So we are going to be catering to various requirements. Uh, the first entry of our uh, MG Select will be coming in in calendar year Q1 next year. So by the end of Q1, which is by the end of March 2025, six months from now, we will have our stores and we will have our product coming in the marketplace. So, so it's, it's a very tight six months plan. True. And so, you know, this is Autocar. Uh, we obviously want to know what that product is. So what's going to be the first? I know you're not going to tell me all four, but one of those four, which which would, would it be? I have some ideas, but... I enjoy talking to you always, Sergius, <laughs> and I don't want to give you all the details right now. Okay. Because we should have one more conversation very soon. Okay, so can I can I go out on a limb here and say it's going to be the Cyberster? That would be like a, a halo It is. Brand. It is definitely one of the products that we have uh, yeah. overall in our portfolio right. that we have been shortlisted that we have shortlisted and working on it. As we speak, our team is also working on various production builds for the other products as right. well. Uh, these are going to be mostly assembled products okay. and uh, bringing in some freshness in the marketplace. In fact, that kind of leads into my next question. I was going to ask you, would this also be open to CBUs? Uh, would, you, would you look See, at that? Looking, at the, looking at the overall duty structure that we have mm -hmm. today in the marketplace in Palas and country, uh, we are going to be looking at assembled uh, products for the, select. for the select completely. Uh, that is the right way of doing it uh, from a business aspect perspective, business case perspective, as well as the overall, you know, I would say commitment to be able to support those products in the local market as well. Right. Great. So, Gaurav, last question I have for you uh, before I let you go, of course, is uh, in terms of the appearance itself, are you going to be looking at a new CI, corporate identity, new color schemes and things like that? Or do you want it to sort of uh, rub off? Because Interestingly, I noticed, unlike let's say Maruti and Nexa, where Nexa has nothing, there's no Maruti in the name, you've chosen to keep MG Select. So you have a tie-in to, you know, MG or your, your Yeah, you know, uh, it's a very thoughtful uh, way that we have built up and arrived as to where we are. You see, uh, we've studied the consumers in the marketplace. We looked at the new emerging market customer, what his needs and desires are. The MG brand in India today already enjoys a very good consumer pull. It's been rated very well on customer satisfaction on sales and service, including dealer satisfaction as well. And the brand is standing for innovation and building up new products. So that is going to be obviously the almost the hallmark of the entire MG brand. You bring in MG Select, it also dovetails into strengthening the MG brand overall in the marketplace. And we don't want to keep MG, the Select devoid of MG. So it is MG Select and the normal channel will be MG itself. Right. So they will have a very good, you could say synthesis of supporting each other as well. Right. And so in terms of a look and feel, uh, you would uh, you would also it'll have, have a very distinct uh, look okay. and feel. It'll have a very distinct look and feel. Uh, it'll have all the cues of what new age luxury should be. I would rather say accessible luxury should be. Okay. And it'll build up. So uh, we are going to be, uh, you know, releasing the, the images very soon of our planned facilities also. Okay. And you will see that they are very, they're going to be very distinct. They'll bring in a freshness to the entire experience of the consumers. So, Gaurav, you know, in terms of, obviously, when you, you, you 
take forward a business plan like this, you must have a certain business case behind this. What are you looking at in terms of MG select contribution to the overall business in terms of, let's say, percentage? How much do you think? You know, uh, probably we'll talk about the absolute numbers in due course of time, Sergius. But the important one factor that I'd like to share with you is that in the overall auto industry today, in the passenger vehicle segment, the penetration of EVs today is just about 2%. Overall, yes. Overall, yeah, in India. Correct, that's right? the in industry, India market. correct. Whereas when we look at the EV penetration within the luxury segment of India, it's about 7%. Right. So already there is a higher propensity to move towards new energy vehicles in this category of luxury customers. And that is where we also are building up our portfolio of new energy vehicles. It's already three and a half times of multiple of the current number in the mainstream area. So this will actually be a much better, much more of an advantage to us as MG because all the three options we do have in our suite of products and they will be riding on to this entire, you know, fast adoption of NEVs in the segment. Right. So, uh, you know, that's uh, one, you know, sort of uh, way in which you're going to look at it. So you're looking at NEVs, like you said, plug-in hybrids, hybrids and electrics. Correct. Within that, uh, do you see electric or plug-in hybrid or any one of these sort of taking the lead uh, in, in, the, in the select portfolio? See, I would say uh, to begin with, obviously, there's going to be an interplay of the product type that we bring in, the kind of choices we bring in. Uh, but worldwide, we are also seeing that plug-in hybrids are doing very well. Okay. You know, they give you the benefit of both, of electric as well as uh, hybrid together. So I would say that hybrid, plug-in hybrid, hybrid and EVs all are going to be work okay. together. Obviously, I would gravitate more towards plug-in hybrid and EVs because that's where the new momentum is building up. Right. right. And, you know, since we're talking plug-in hybrid, Gaurav, what's your opinion on, obviously, you know, the government and I think the industry itself is mm -hmm. kind of divided. You have a camp of manufacturers who say, no, we shouldn't be subsidizing in any which way hybrids. Let's just go straight to electric. And there's another camp that says, no, we should be looking at, 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 at hybrids in, in some way, sort of incentivizing them. What's your thought uh, on, I think on this? Uh, the, the approach definitely has to be a more holistic approach in terms of how are we starting from the entire aspect of how are we taxing the entire, the taxation structure of automotive industry to begin with. Then what is the kind of oil pool deficit we have as a country and how do we minimize that? Third, what are the kind of resources we have within our country? And therefore, we're looking at other concerns of pollution, other concerns of cost of ownership of the rising Indian. How are we going to be looking at all of these aspects together and then choosing the way forward? I firmly believe that uh, the path of electrification is, is there to stay for sure and in fact grow as we speak. Uh, today, uh, shifting gears from, uh, from MG Select, I think the three key areas that will really be helpful to India is good electric vehicle products, a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. Second is what we have just done with MG Windsor in terms of battery as a service because that really helps you to acquire EVs because otherwise there has been a feeling about EVs being expensive because of the battery cost. So on one hand, battery cost is coming down because of raw material coming down. At the same time, battery as a service gives you even more higher flexibility of ownership. And the third hurdle has been of charging infrastructure with the e-hub of MG that we just launched about uh, 6th of August. 80% of the country's public charging network is available in one central place where you can identify, block, book, pay, plan your route, etc. So then you have the entire momentum building up good products, true EVs, then you've got charging infrastructure confidence, and you've got the acquisition price being taken care of. True, right. Then you'll see the momentum building up even more. So I'm very bullish on this one. Fantastic, Gaurav. Can't, can't wait. Uh, looking forward to that. And uh, all the best uh, with uh, taking Select forward. Thank you so much, Regis. Thank you very much. <laughs>